San Diego Comic-Con news is in and the comic fam needs to be warned. Another week, another list. Gem Mint from Gem Mint Collectibles on the line, broadcasting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button, and Gem hit it with number 10. I'd be happy to, Tom, and this one is a direct result from an announcement at San Diego Comic-Con. Todd McFarlane is bringing back Spawn vs. Batman. So number 10 on the list is the OG, the original comic from 1994. Spawn Batman number one, hitting $10 average sales, $170 for a CGC 9.8. Less than a month ago, this book was hitting closer to 100, an increase of 275% this week, because not only did Todd McFarlane break the news, it was after Jim Lee, you know, he's part of DC, announced it during his panel, and that's not all. They got Greg Capullo in the mix, who did some of the early issues of Spawn, and we haven't seen a team up like this in decades. Man, when I was a kid, I thought all those Spawn covers were Todd McFarlane and would later find out that Greg Capullo was responsible for so many of them. An amazing artist who still kills it to this day. December 13th, we have a 48-page Spawn Batman coming, courtesy of Jim Lee McFarlane and Capullo. And not only that, they are reprinting Batman Spawn War Devil number one. The other issue that Batman and Spawn crossed over in the past, getting that back out to the comic fam mid-November in anticipation of the December. December release. If you enjoy what we do, hit the like and subscribe button, but do yourself a solid. Keep up with the rapidly moving marketplace and all of these types of announcements at conventions. There's a lot of them. They're back to back and it's moving the marketplace. Download Key Collector Comics available for both Androids and iPhones. Code Tom 101 not only unlocks a free two-week subscription to the app, but you support the show. Next at the list at number nine. I thought bad idea was over, Jam. I mean, they went straight donut production, but it looks like they're coming back. We have Sacred Heart number one coming out at San Diego Comic-Con 2022. That's right, Bad Idea is back with another installment in their Hero Trade universe. This isn't a clear comic. You actually had to step to Matt Kent, the writer of this book, also the writer of Berserker, to secure a copy. This has been going for $525 average sales. I was able to confirm that there are about 250 of these comic books in existence. Most, if not all of them, were signed. And on the inside, there's a four-page pinup that reads, Bad Idea is over. You know they're a donut company right now. Peep the last podcast. I get into it. I talk about the invisible book and everything. However, the word over is crossed out. It looks like bad ideas coming back. What's up, comic butch? The SDCC announcements keep rolling in. Keep putting books on the trending list. Number eight is Secret Wars issue number one from 2015. Jonathan Hickman, Assad Ribic, Alex Ross cover art. You know why this one's spiking. $5 average sales, but the book is picking up steam. Hitting $350 for a 9.8 and an increase of 400% in the last seven days. You know it's because San Diego Comic-Con, this book at a 9.8 was hitting around $300 just weeks ago and lows mid-July of $132 at auction. Now, I don't know if this is really the book to spec on. I get the hype. It's the title of the movie. But if we think about Infinity War, Endgame, those titles had very little to do with the comics they're associated with. I completely agree with you, Jam. And this is why I wanted to give the warning prior to the show starting. Some of these books are spiking in name or title only, which I understand why someone would want to own a piece of comic history like that. But it's important to notate when a key significance is because of a title alone or because of something happening on the inside of the book. Secret Wars 1 definitely is going to be adapted to the screen to some degree because of things like incursions being mentioned in the MCU. But this isn't the only title that is called Secret Wars that is also getting a bump. Yeah, you're right, because there are other Secret Wars titles that are spiking. The original from 1984, the first Marvel event, that issue is spiking as well. I don't think we expected to get as much information as we did during San Diego Comic-Con. Not only did we get the end of Phase 4, we got a Phase 5 slate and Phase 6. Keep this warning in mind. If you're interested in buying the book because of the name alone, the comic history, I completely understand. That's fair game. But these could be some of the most volatile comic books to spec on right now because they're in name only. Keep an eye out on other key books if you're looking for something that may be a safer, less risky bet. 
One thing that we do know, however, is that the MCU is leading to a conflict in the future that is going to be so much larger than what we experienced in Avengers Endgame. You gotta buckle up. It's about to get hot. Moving on to number seven on the list, we saw Namor in all his glory in the Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer. Now Namor books are spiking, which they already were, but this is the first time we're seeing Namor the Submariner issue one by John Byrne hit the trending list. 90s goodness, the sixth solo series of Namor to premiere, seeing $10 average sales and a 9.8, hitting 175, and increase the copy sold of 471% this week after what I believe may be the best MCU trailer to premiere to date. Yeah, this is another one of those next best thing options. I mean, you've got his Golden Age appearance, his first Silver Age appearance. Even FF Annual 1 has made our Hot 10 list multiple times. So a number one starting off a new volume by legacy creator John Byrne. And shout out to Jay Lee, who later joins on. Actually, Marvel published an omnibus of this a while ago. I've been telling you guys since before the Disney acquisition of Fantastic Four and X-Men, you gotta look at what Marvel is publishing months before we get these announcements. Follow one of the best channels on YouTube if you don't already. You know Gem Mint's link is in the description below. Seeing that this book can be secured for under $20 in near mint, graded, 9.8s are approaching $200, comic fam, and a 90s book is going to be pretty easy to secure that high grade that you're looking for at the list at number six. We're not done talking about Black Panther. Black Panther number eight. Seeing $25 average sales, a 9.8 recently hitting $260. You knew there had to be some Black Panther love on this list after that heart-wrenching trailer. We got the first appearance of Annika, the leader of the Dora Milaje, who we've seen multiple times in the MCU, including including on Disney Plus. Definitely gonna see them again in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And this book has a pretty low print run, just over 23,000. Now we were expecting to see Annika for years and boom, there she was in trailer. So hyped for this, being portrayed by Michaela Cole, wielding a vibranium dagger. Look at this, we're getting the Midnight Angels armor, it appears. This book is seeing an increase of 600% in copies sold since the trailer dropped. Clearly, it's striking a chord for not just MCU fans, but comic collectors for good reason. We've got Namor. It looks like we've got a new Black Panther at the end of the trailer. Drop a comment down below who you think it's going to be. Let me know. It answers you to win this Invincible number one, Tyler Kirkham, Omni-Man variant, next at the list at number five. Tales of Suspense 94. This book comes and goes every single year. MODOK is coming to the MCU. Another San Diego Comic-Con reveal. We know that we're going to get MODOK in Ant-Man and Wasp 3 Quantumania. Now, they may change the origin here. It might actually be a messed up version of Yellow Jacket from the first movie. This book is selling for $770 on average. A recent 9.2 hit $1,329. An increase of 840%. And I think this is a great villain to include in this movie. It's going to be a fun movie to watch. Ant-Man has been one of my favorite MCU films. You know, I love Paul Rudd. And finding out that Kang was going to play a role definitely was a little confusing because he is going to be such a daunting foe. But it makes sense because he's going to be leveled out with the comedic relief of a villain such as Modoc. That's right. And they need to start really setting up Kang as this major threat because we have the Kang dynasty coming. Oh, but we'll get into it soon at the list at number four, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons number one. Talk about a good spec book from long ago. $25 average sales, July 9.8s hitting $360. This book is on con floors. People don't really prioritize this comic book. I bet you can find it on the hunt. This is the first ongoing comic book series based off of the Dungeons and Dragons game. I used to play Dungeons and Dragons like between the ages of 8 and 15 all the damn time. I used to go to LCSs for not just comic books, but I would play Magic the Gathering and D&D. What about you, Jem? Stranger Things is the closest I've ever gotten to Dungeons and Dragons, but I could respect the property and the fact that the trailer propelled this book for an 875% increase in comics sold. Paramount's Dungeons and Dragons Honor Amongst Thieves, I think surprised the world. It looks damn good. 
Like, I think most people were expecting this to be kind of silly, but then listen to this cast that they have. Chris Pine, Michelle Rodriguez, and Hugh Grant. These are A-list actors, and they're going to kill the role. I think that this is going to be a surprise hit. And who doesn't need a little bit more D&D in their life? Clearly, Jem does. I'm going to have to check it out. Next on the list, coming in at number three, we have Daredevil 227. Now, what's the significance of this? It's just a little storyline called Born Again. Coming out in 1986, $25 average sales, $400 for a CGC 9.8 is what the record was after the announcement hit at San Diego Comic-Con that Daredevil's not only coming back, not only showing up on occasion, no, Daredevil is being born again. He's getting his own series and it's coming in the form of an 18 episode saga. I am so hyped for this, Jeb. This is one of my favorite announcements all weekend. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they do with this series. 18 episodes. This is giving me like Law and Order vibes with the length here. Also, the hype really started when we got that She-Hulk trailer giving us a glimpse of Matt Murdock as Daredevil in his yellow suit also spiking Daredevil 7 when he first dons the red costume. That made the hot 10 this past week. This comic is hot. It's scorching an increase of 1,400% in copies sold. And although we reported on a $400 high sale, I found an eBay listing that is sitting on auction at the time of this filming. It's got a few hours left to go and it's sitting at $570. And this is another one of those situations where I gotta say, big warning. This is in name only. In no way do I expect this narrative to be translated to the screen. It's dark. It's gritty. It's like Frank Miller stuff, you know, like Karen Page is really addicted to drugs. She's like doing pornography and stuff and rats out daredevil tells everybody who he is kingpin starts messing with his life like this is not what's gonna be on disney plus although vincent d'onofrio has been confirmed to reprise his role as kingpin so maybe they will play with the aspect of him finding out matt murdoch's true identity that's another good reason to buy this book i mean frank miller it's a cool minor key and now being translated to the screen by name only likely i think it's important for members to know their comics a little bit more because when they're spiking 3x that's a lot of money to put down. The more you know, you may make a decision to spec on something else that may have a bit more longevity, maybe a bit safer in the marketplace. It can get volatile. Next at the list, at number two, we have Avengers 41, debuting in 2001, seeing $3 average sales. You know, it's gotta be Kang something. That's right, another speculation book in movie title only. The Kang Dynasty, pushing this $3 average book to have a 1,900% increase in copies sold. This is part one of a 16 issue arc that is collectively called the Kang Dynasty. So this isn't even just one story to spec on in one single issue. This is the first of an entire arc. So this is like one step removed from the conversation that we just had. But 1900%, that is all because of the news, not just a phase six announcement that will conclude with a Secret Wars epic movie. No, we are going to be getting Avengers Kang Dynasty by the same director of Shang-Chi. Let's celebrate that one. That's fantastic. I really like what Destin Daniel Creighton did with Shang-Chi. I felt like it broke the cookie cutter mold of the MCU, especially with that third act. Plus, they're giving him the reins to Wonder Man. Now, if the story arc spec is not getting you there, but you're looking for the name only, I'm still going to give it to you because it's also spiking to all hell this week. This is based off of the titled story found in Avengers 268, debuting in 1986, seeing $10 average sales and a 9.8 hitting $150 and an increase of copies sold of 1,725% this week, also landing on the trending 20, the larger list found on Key Collector Comics where we source the 10 books that make our trending 10 every single week. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button, go to comictom101.com and join the August Mystery Mail Call. You only got a couple weeks left and we have going in one per box, either a trade dress or a virgin of Gambit number one, written by Chris Claremont, a glorious Peach Momoko cover, a dual exclusive with whatnot. Support the show and Jem hit him with the number one trending book this week because it wasn't about live action MCU. We didn't even talk about DC announcements. Nah, it's about X-Men 
and it's the animated series. I grew up watching the X-Men animated series. I've been waiting for this reboot. X-Men 97, we got footage at San Diego Comic-Con and they borrowed the Magneto costume, probably the whole storyline from this milestone issue. X-Men 200, the most trending comic book in the world. That's right, debuting in 1985. The Trial of Magneto, which by the way, Marvel just redid Trial of Magneto earlier this year. I even did a Raph Grissetti variant of it. Jem, I think you're onto something. We gotta really pay close attention to Marvel publishing. They're either really predicting things well or they know things. This book is seeing $10 average sales and a 9.8 in July sold for $180. This is where Magneto becomes headmaster of Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. This is where we get the new mutants. So perhaps we're gonna lead into that territory in the animated series. Either way, this has led to a 2,400% increase in copies sold for X-Men 200. We saw a glimpse of the trailer. Clearly, the members are hyped. So much San Diego Comic-Con news. But keep in mind, if some news that you were hoping for didn't surface this past weekend, D23 is near, and those gaps are likely going to be filled then. And you can subscribe to the channel, because you know when that gets announced, we're going to be talking about the comics that are getting hot because of it. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button, follow Gem Mint from Gem Mint Collectibles, and as always, geek responsibly, stay minty fresh, and we'll see you in Chicago. Nuff said. Join myself and so many of my friends on the best new place to buy and sell collectibles, whatnot, available for both platforms, dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long. C2E2 is next week. I'm not stopping the hunt, comic fam. I'm grabbing those exclusives and I'm getting them to you first. I even shipped out most of our boxes this past weekend in the hotel room so you can get your comic books faster than anyone else. Link in the description. Follow me there and take a look at these two other videos. I made them for you. Have a great week.